Hello everybody, it's Sanier, Engineer, MBA, and Investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about NTLA, or known as Antilia Therapeutics company in the CRISPR landscape. Of course, this was actually the second company that I covered when I made this channel almost two years ago at this point. It's crazy how time go flies, right? Um, almost two years ago since we've had this channel. I think it was it's not really almost, it's more like February of 2021, but still like two months, right? It's pretty quick. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty impressive, to be honest. Two years, almost daily videos. I think um, it's been a fun ride and uh, I'm gonna keep making these videos until uh, no one watches, right? So, um, but I think up until now, I think there's always value for these videos and that's exactly what I'm doing today on a, on a rainy Sunday here in Toronto. Not really a good Sunday. And before I do jump into Intelia LA, uh, their video, I got this copyright claim uh, this morning. I woke up and I see there are two separate copyright claims on the same video by two separate parties. And that is not fun. That is not fun. I am almost 99.5% sure that for those two songs, I actually took it as a free uh, audio library and I make sure it was from a reputable site and I made sure that uh, it's clearly stated that you could use it for uh, your videos on YouTube and so on. But clearly I was wrong. I mean, I made this video about 10 months ago, I think. So why did it come up now or last night rather? I don't know, but it's two separate companies doing it at the same time makes you wonder if it's really two separate companies. I mean, what's the coincidence? I mean, nonetheless, um, that's the bad news for the day. Uh, the good news is that I went, uh, it's been a good weekend so far, um, to the gym, basketball. I think it's fun to, to pick up some activities, hobbies over the weekend, just to relax. And then over the week, just you know, push at work at your day job or whatnot. So. Anyhow, NTLA, they have two successful in vivo programs when it comes to CRISPR, using CRISPR-Cas9, of course, NTLA 2001 and NTLA 2002. NTLA 2001, we've heard it since 2021. They've been doing amazing, data is amazing. I think that's gonna be FDA approved by the next two to three years, in my opinion. The only difference between NTLA 2001 and NTLA 2002, before, besides the obvious that they're tackling another set of disease there, is if you look at the right column here and you see there's no partner, which means that NTLA owns 100% of this program. Now, whether or not they'll be owning 100% of this program for the rest of the time this program is out there, or whether or not they end up partnering with a company, share it 50%, get some upfront millions or billions of dollars in, in this case, um, that's debatable. That's not decided yet. I just think I love it how uh, they have this leverage, right? That they can do whatever they want if they want to go commercial and fully own this program, 100% of the profits, 100% of the sales. Or they can partner up with Regeneron, their existing partner, or introduce a new partner who's going to share those risks and, of course, give upfront money to NTLA so that they can invest further in other programs like you see in this list. In the ex vivo world, again, if you guys remember, in vivo is basically injecting in, in those cases in the liver directly on the patient after assessing it, after scanning it, you just inject a one-time potential treatment to, a D, um, to the patient and that's it. Ex vivo is you retrieve certain cells and so on from the patients, modify them and then input back in the human. Now, of course, there are pros and cons for both of them. Ex vivo, you can of course assess it better, you can scan it better, there's less risk is, as per se, but the trade-off here is obviously it's time consuming. It's not really scalable when you think about it um, in a sense where if you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands, but I don't think any of these companies were planning to tackle 100 to 1,000 patients right off the bat. I think CRISPR Therapeutics already said they're tackling 1,000 patients a year for the next few years if CTA-01 is FDA approved. So you know, we're, we wouldn't be talking about less than a decade at that point, right? But nonetheless, ex vivo, they have 
these two programs here, NTLA 5001, which I think I have my eyes on because again, fully on. And of course, acute myeloid leukemia is a, of course, a, a disease, a cancer rather. And of course, they're trying to do the whole T cell therapy there. And I really, really want to see that uh, go through. And the sickle cell disease, which is uh, a disease that many companies are trying to tackle, just like I mentioned about CTA001, there's a reason why many want, companies want to tackle. And it is one of the easiest disease to tackle when you think about it with CRISPR. But that is, of course, ex vivo with partner with Novartis. And I, I really like this company for a couple of reasons, guys. First of all, I feel like this company has the leadership, right? It has a leadership that, that is there to, uh, to, to get the job done, right? This company is really, really interesting because, you know, led by Jen, John Leonard here, and they have some veterans in the team from different uh, set of experiences. Uh, you know, you look at Clark, you look at Basta, you look at Godard. I mean, they're all individuals who have been in this company for a while at this point, and I think they're going to stick through and see this play out. I mean, the difference between companies like CRISPR Therapeutics um, is that CRISPR Therapeutics lost like two of their leaders in the last like year, basically. Tony Ho was the first one, and they lost one recently as well that we covered a video. If you don't know about it, do watch our video catalog. I have it. Just search for CRISPR leader. Um, and I, I think it does matter having a strong leadership to be able to go through these times, especially in a recession we're in. Um, I think it does ex it really, really matter, right? And I think uh, this is one of those companies that's, that have cash in the balance. I believe they have about a billion dollars at this point, cash in the balance sheet. They have an amazing partner called Reg Regeneron, which is actually one of their uh, good partners, but rather one of the top pharma companies in this space of healthcare. And on top of that, they have two successful CRISPR programs right now, anti 2001 and anti 2002 And that's exactly why I wanted to go to this uh, thread from a year here who did an amazing job talking about 2002. Uh, again, I made a video about this last week. I think it was over a week ago when they published their latest set of data. Uh, I went briefly over it, but just as a reminder, until 2002 is targeting KLB gene one gene expressing by knocking out KLB K one gene. So basically, they want to enhance it. And, uh, they want to avoid the production of a protein called calicrin, and that's exactly like something similar to what we saw with until 2001, which is of course the reduction of TTR proteins. Right? Again, different different program, different set of disease, but. I'm making an analogy here so that people can understand maybe uh, if they're not familiar with this program, but rather with 2001, right? And of course, the dose were never really defined. They had three different set of dosage and they got amazing data for all three. In fact, I think the best one was the third one, of course, uh, getting them an amazing set of 92% of production, which is pretty, pretty impressive when you think about it. Uh, but again, small sample size. There's a lot of variances there, but that's exactly what they're doing here. Uh, they, I, be I believe we covered that, but they did select their uh, their dosage going forward, I believe. Uh, and of course, uh, they'll be uh, looking at their existing cohort of 50 milligram, looking at their, the full period of 16 weeks and plus. You got to monitor these patients. That's the whole point of phase one, phase two. Uh, no dose for the dose escalation. So uh, they, it's not like they'll increase the dosage, they'll probably stick between 50 to 75 there uh, going forward. And again, they can always modify that statement. It's not like they're set in green, but if they're confident about that, uh, starting phase two with the first half of 2023, it's probably because they've narrowed down the dosage, which you, again, we made a video when they announced, uh, when they announced this set of result a little over a week ago. I think this, this company is one of those companies a lot of people in this space respect. I think a lot of people understand the value of NTLA. It's one of that company that, you know, it's one of those companies, it's not the oldest company in the CRISPR landscape, it's not the newest, it's not the fanciest in terms of technology, but it's definitely not like the leggy, legacy technology. It's still in vivo, there's nothing legacy about in vivo. Companies are dying to get in the in vivo space. Just look at CRISPR Therapeutics looking into in vivo as well. So 
I, I just feel there's a really proper balance with this company. Everything that I've talked about so far about this company, I've always, always, always had high respect for it. And I think uh, this is one of those companies that you want to, um, you want to, Again, we don't provide financial advice and I'm definitely not going to be providing financial guidance or advice anytime soon, especially in this recession that we're in. Uh, but if there's one company, guys, that you want to look into, look at these key zones, milestones going forward. 2001, 2002, which again, successful CRISPR program. They have 3001 uh, in 2023 getting uh, started there potentially. 5001, which already is going to be potentially getting data by end of 2023 maybe. Uh, considering it's ex vivo, you know, there's there's so many great things about this company. You know, they have partners like Novartis, uh, Regeneron. Novartis is actually a really, really uh, important partner in, in the ex vivo side of things here. And I just think it's amazing. Look at this. Like this, this company has an, a golden opportunity right now. There are, they've done everything right up to date, right? Leadership, their programs, their tracking, the fact they approached in vivo first as opposed to sticking with ex vivo when it was the industry norm. They tried something different and it clearly worked out for them. And it doesn't mean that they can't do ex vivo. That's what they're doing with the 5001, right? Their program. So I just think it's amazing what they're doing there. Um, the only thing I would say about this company, my only feedback, and again, this is feedback that I sort of give to CRISPR Therapeutics as well, uh, is what about, you know, acquisition? What about, you know, hiring? What about, um, you know, how, how do you scale this business, right? And, and on top of that, how do you maybe, you know, do more than just human therapeutics, right? Which is a video I made about Mammoth a few days ago. How about, you know, you enter in sequencing or diagnostics, you try to do something different. If this company is known to do things differently and they have such an amazing leadership, I don't think it'll be such a far-fetched argument to make so that they could venture in maybe something else a little program, little pilot program, little segment of this company as terms of diagnostics, maybe to maybe make a potential hardware revenue, some sense, you know, sort of leverage, you know, their expertise and, and leverage, you know, their knowledge of a CRISPR and use that maybe in a different vertical than human therapeutics so they can, you know, maybe uh, garnish some profits that for investors. I mean, ultimately they have to share investors and shareholders and I am one of shareholders. I am one of the investors in I'm suggesting that, right? But whether or not they listen to me or whether or not they decide that, uh, that's of course their company. And it is, uh, there's a reason why this company has been successful so far. So we'll leave it off like that. So I'll end this video like this, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video, fan value. Subscribe if you're not. And hopefully you guys are having a beautiful Sunday. Uh, different than here in Toronto, which is very rainy, very cloudy, dark. Uh, but you're going to get one of those days, right? To get those sunshine days. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you during the week. Tomorrow I'm going to New York, the state in Buffalo for a business meeting. So I'll see you guys maybe on Tuesday. Thank you.